Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my corner of the internet. My name is Jason and today we're back with some more Shadowrun Returns. Last time we talked to uh, Algernon, Mr. Telestrian, uh, Harlequin, and uh, Hans Brockus, and uh, I can't remember her name and it won't let me sort of mouse over it. I'm sorry, lady. Anyways, we talked uh, with them, and uh, we kind of started to come up with sort of a plan, because we're going to go ahead, and they're going to give us the equipment, and they're going to get us to give us the gear, and we're going to go ahead and kill these bugs. But before we go ahead and do that, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and get geared up, get equipped, and see what else these guys have got to say. Right now, Harlequin's got a yellow sort of uh, marker above his head, which kind of implies to me that talking to him, uh will result in going off on the mission because I feel like he's the next goal so we're gonna go ahead and talk to everyone else first first Algernon because I suspect he's going to be able to give us some magic spells hey Algernon how are you doing may I provide spells spirit Falky, Falky, or fetishes to help you on this critical quest I've got a question first speak it were you spying on me at the seamstresses union sure his eyes widened at the question you mistake your importance, Alex X. No, I was not spying on you. Until Mr. Telestrian's summons, you were beneath my notice. I saw only a customer. Now, do you require my magic? Are you really here? Algernon's face takes on a dreamy expression. Are any of us? Yes, Alex X, I am here. And at the Seamstresses Union. And a myriad of other places. On to the work at hand. Do you re require my magic? Who are you? I am a peddler of magical spells, spirits, and foci. Foki. Foki. I don't know how to spell that. Say, or say that, rather. I know how to spell it. It's right in front of me. Nothing more. Truly? No. <laughs> Do you require my magic? All right, Algernon. Can I see what you're selling? All right. Let's see if we can upgrade anything. It doesn't look like we can. Right now, we've got, uh, let's see. All he sells is spells, right? Uh, and some consumable stuff. Uh, let's see. Weapons. Power bolt we've already got. Spells. Mana bolt 3. Ignores armor and targets willpower and does ongoing at minus uh, 10 HP that lasts two rounds. Mm, if I were to go ahead and use, uh, let's see, mana ball. Mana ball 3. Which does a total of 15 damage. Oh, it's got an area of effect of 2. Mm, so basically it does 15 damage to AoE. And then it does an additional 20 damage, so that's a total of 35 damage on one cast. That's not too bad. Now, the Power Bolt does a total of 15 damage, uh, but it does a total of 30 damage on two different targets. But that's AoE. It's actually not a terrible AoE spell. But if we compare it to, like, say, Ball Lightning, what does bite the Ball Lightning do? It has about the same AoE damage, and this has got more of a, um... Okay, Mana Ball doesn't sound like it's too bad of an idea. But, I feel like I've, I've got the spells that I want to use. I don't really see anything here that's really jumping out at me. And nothing, there's nothing that's really like, yes, I need that. I need that now. I need that in my life. Please, yes. Um, this one actually looks... Actually, that one looks deadly. Target loses all APs for two rounds and cannot attack or move. Last two rounds. So, this here is kind of like the, um... It's kind of like confusion, except... You can probably keep attacking them while they've they're they're, uh, they're petrified. It does have a longer cooldown than confusion, though. So I'm kind of wondering if confusion would be a better spell altogether because they switch over to your team, and then you know you've got someone on your team that's helping you out. So I'm not sure that that necessarily is uh, a necessity. Um, I can always change up my spells between fights, though, right? Like, how many more fights am I going to have? I don't know. Should I buy it just so I can have it, just in case? I'm gonna grab Petrify. Just, just in case. And we're gonna go ahead and hit Confirm. That's gonna be the only spell I'm gonna buy. Um, I don't even know where if I'm gonna slot it in, if I am gonna slot it in anywhere. Cause I like, I like, oh, see Mind Wipe, that's another good, uh... Actually, that's... Target ignores all enemies. Actually, we're gonna get rid of Mind Wipe, because I feel like Petrify kind of does the same thing, except we can attack the people. There we go. So we've got Flamethrower 2. I don't know if there was a Flamethrower 3. I didn't, I didn't see one. I don't remember seeing one. Uh, Heal Wound. Petrify. Armor 3. Confusion. And Ball Lightning. Let me go ahead and talk with him one more time. I just want to see if 
uh, they do have a new uh, healing spell, uh, like a better healing spell or a better um, flamethrower. I don't think they do, but uh, I gotta double check, right? I gotta, I gotta know these things. Fireball flamethrower three. Yeah, that that definitely seems like it's uh, an upgrade, because I'm using flamethrower one, aren't I? What about the, what about healing? Where's the healing? Heal wound. I only see one heal wound. And these are shaman spells, so I'm just looking at spells. Glue. No, I, Petrify seems better than that. It does have a longer cooldown, so I can't use it as much, but, uh, sorry, Petrify has a longer cooldown. So I can't use it as, use it as much, but, eh. Um, let's see, actually, let me see, what items do I currently have? Ah, come on, Jason, come on. Where's my spells? Let me look at my, my spells here. I got Flamethrower 2, that's what it is. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get Flamethrower 3. That way there I can uh, have a better Flamethrower spell at my disposal. Uh, where is, uh, where is it? Where is it? It was just here. Flamethrower 3. There we go. I will go ahead and confirm that. We will remove Flamethrower 2 and add Flamethrower 3, which is right here. There we go, I think that's pre pretty good. Uh, that's actually, that seems like a decent, uh, a decent loadout. So we've got two sort of crowd control spells. One will petrify the enemy, one will actually put one enemy on our team. We've got armor, which I can just continuously putting on, keep putting on everybody. I've got healing, so if there's like one wound, I can go ahead and heal that. I've got ball lightning, which is a nice opening, uh, shot. I've also got a flamethrower, which is a decent damage spell, and then I've also got my regular power bolt. I feel like I'm, uh, I, I feel like I've got some, my, some good stuff. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to Hans Brockus. Hans. We did not allow many opportunities during our briefing for you to ask questions, Shadowrunner. You may ask them now. How did the inspe- inspect- How did the inspect spirits get here? When the membrane between planes thins, the insect spirits reach into the mind of a shaman and begin their manipulation. Playing on weaknesses and offering unlimited power if the rituals needed to bring the spirits here are performed. But once a shaman takes on an insect spirit as a totem, they begin an inevitable decline into insanity, slowly losing their humanity. Eventually, the shaman completely succumbs, choosing the contentment and sense of clear purpose that being part of a hive provides. Provide, perform your role, serve your queen. That is all. If Lof, Lofweir had seen this before and knew another was coming, why didn't he move faster? Based upon the previous cycles of magic, the first insects are not due to appear for another 700 years. So we are early. My Lord Lofweir believed he was well ahead of schedule. Something is different this time. It is... concerning. Why do you think it's different this time? Perhaps it is due to the population of humans and metahumans on Earth being so much higher than in previous ages. As a result, the volume of magic created by sentient beings is correspondingly higher, or perhaps it is the density of the population coupled with the advances of society and technology that has altered things. Uh, sorry, I gotta speak a little bit quicker. I know he's a very slow-spoken person kind of thing, but I, we, we got a lot of text to get through here. Magic has never returned to a world like this one before. The density of sentient creatures coupled with the density of information coupled with, uh, coupled with the a uh, new concept. Okay, that's a typo. The technological persistence of memory heightens a s heightens a society. Oh my goodness, I should not be doing this right now. Heightens a society's ex existential angst. Thus, more people realize how truly horrible existence is simultaneously. That in itself may be a form of magic. Loft, we are studying the question now. So, what's it like to serve a great dragon? The German man's eyes narrow. Do not misconstrue my relationship with Lord Lofweir. I do not serve. Sorry, sorry guy. Sorry. So where do the insect spirits come from? As the level of magic in the sixth world grows, the, for lack of a better word, the distance between the various planes of reality decreases. Now when the membrane between the planes is thin enough, ritual magic may be used to draw beings from one to another. Alright, I feel like that's he's just sort of repeating what we already know, so I should go. Yes. Good luck. All right, let's go ahead and talk to Mr. Quoth and see if we can't find some gear to uh, buy, get her, you know, equip ourselves with. Uh, while we're going ahead, get some gear. Let's go ahead and stop and talk with uh, Marie Louise uh, again. I was listening. It sounds bad. Yep. 
Thank you for everything. Bishkeg! Could be worse. <laughs> I like that one. Could be worse. Could be raining. She smiles. It's Seattle. You look like you have a question. Why were you locked up at the Universal Brotherhood? Father didn't approve of my boyfriend and tried to scare him off. Something went wrong and Harkim ended up in a wheelchair. Father covered the whole thing up and lied to, to me about Harkim. He told me horrible things. Her jaw clenches. And I believed him. Alright, so it, it was mentioned in the last episode, uh, but, um, you know, I, I was kind of suspecting. I was like, maybe uh, Sam Z is actually uh, like an AI or something. But it turns out he's probably just, uh, well, as... As we've been reminded again in this episode right here, um, that he's possibly a cripple or something had happened to his legs. So, uh, now he's sitting in front of a computer being a hacker. Okay. My Aunt Lynn told me the truth about Harkim and how my father lied. She preyed upon my anger. I was so disgusted with him. It was easy for her to get me to leave and join her new family at the Universal Brotherhood. Okay. What did... Wait. Oh yeah, Aunt Lynn. Okay, because I was like, wait a second. She has the last name as Mr. Telestri, and they must be related. Yes, Jason, you were just informed that it was her aunt, you idiot. What did Lynn Telestri and the Universal Brotherhood want with you? Was it Harkeem who helped you in the Matrix? Or what? So, what did Harkeem tell you about us breaking into your father's office? Um, I'm going to just go down the list here. Uh, so what did, uh, what did they want with you? What did the Universal Brotherhood want with you? Aunt Lynn was very excited to have me there, almost manic. She talked about the inner circle and how I was going to be at its center. She said I would be their queen. The way she spoke, it was as if she'd seen God or something. Her eyes close and she hugs herself tightly. But it's not God she sees. It's bugs. Only bugs. <laughs> was it Harkim who helped you in the Matrix? She smiles in love. Yes, even after my father ruined his life and convinced me to hate him. He's still been watching over me, my angel in cyberspace, Baron Samzi. After we escaped, I told Harkim about the Brotherhood and about the bugs. It was his idea to steal Project Aegis so you could go back to the Universal Brotherhood and exterminate the bugs. But I don't know how he knew about it. Baron Samzi just knows things. So what did Harkim tell you about us breaking into your father's office? Nothing. I haven't spoken to him since last night. Why? What happened? Oh, nothing. <laughs> it went as planned until your father's people found me and brought me in. We went in hard and fast. He got bloodier. He hasn't contacted you? Um, yeah, we'll go with the top one. It went as planned until your father's people found me and brought me in and stuff. Of course it went as planned. Harkeem is amazing in the Matrix. I'm sure I'll hear from him soon. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I should go. All right, let's go. Uh, Mr. C oh, Jeeves, where are you, Jeeves? I see you. I am in need of some new equipment, if you might be so, so kind as to provide it for me. In addition to the Aegis loading launchers we will provide, I am authorized to outfoot you, outfoot you with, I'm, 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 I'm owning it. It's outfoot. I'm authorized to outfoot you with anything from weapons to supplies to clothing. All right, thank you, Alfred. Show me the gear. No, wait, outfit, outfits. Outfits, definitely outfits. I can get some high-grade street armor, but it's not what I want because I'm a mage. No, I'm gonna keep the I'm gonna keep the mage, the court mage, magic stuff. Um, occult robes. No, it looks kind of cool, but it's not. I, I want armor. Like I said, we're going tanky mage. Now I could you could go ahead and say, well, Jason, why don't you get the highest grade street armor? Because this armor here grants us a spellcasting and willpower bonus, and I want to keep the bonus. So, uh, show me the gear though. I, I I can't use a whole lot of weaponry, and I probably can't upgrade my my weapons at all. But I'm hoping that maybe I can. Actually, I don't even know what what, what kind of equipment am I using right now. I'm using a machete, right? So a damage of four. I'm carrying a machete around that does a damage of four and a reach of one. Let me go ahead and take a look at my stats real quick. Um, character. Let's see, strength. So close combat, I've got a one, and i got a rage combat of one. So I'm about as good with either one of those. I don't think I'm ever going to have to use it. I don't think I really even need to buy myself any weapon, because I feel like I, I got everything covered with the magic. Um... But, you know, let's just, for the sake of whatever, for, for the sake of whatever, let's just buy a better weapon. Like, maybe this, uh, Black Scorpion. Uh, the most common gun in the shadows, everyone owns at least one. <laughs> Except for me, evidently. 
Uh, let's see, is there any cooler guns that I could buy that I could probably use? An Uzi. That, that works, too. A Beretta model. So this looks, looks, this looks nice, too. So I like the SMG and the pistol. I could also get myself a shotgun. Is there a, a cool rifle I could carry? Like this one here. This one looks kind of cool. It's a nice long-range weapon. Basic assault rifle that is surprisingly good. Now, the problem I've got is I can't... I can't use it. I'm going to be missing. I don't, I don't see any reason why I would ever need a... Whoa, what have we got here? Oh, these are cool... These are cool short-range weapons. I want one of those. Uh, no, Jason. You decided you were going to go all magic. So you're going to go all magic. All right. Well, let's go ahead and maybe... Hmm... Uh, let's go ahead and grab a rifle. Sure, why not? I'll grab a rifle. 800 new yen, why not? I'll grab a rifle. It's not like it's, um... Sure. It's it's better. It's better than what I was carrying. And at least, you know, I could, I could maybe carry it and just look cool while, while walking around with it. Be like, I've got a gun. All right, uh, I need some cyber installed. Can you help me out? No, thanks, I'm good. All right, we're done. So uh, I think we've got one more person to talk to before we go ahead and talk to Harlequin and get the ball rolling, get things started. Oh, by the way, buddy, you can leave now because I'm off scot free. Kind of. You're going to die, a hole. Hmm, maybe, but I'm going to live first. <laughs> Are you happy? We're all going to die, McCluskey. Yeah, but you're going to die screaming. Mm hmm. Okay, and how does that make you feel? All right, let's move on. I don't like him. I wish I could shoot him. All right, James Telestrian the third. How are you doing? Is there something I can clarify for you? Uh, I think I've pretty much got it. Why was Marie Louise taken by the Universal Brotherhood? I think I already know that too. How do I use Aegis? I, I, I'm pretty sure they already explained it, but I think I think this is an opportunity for uh, them to sort of remind you of everything that just happened, you know, two seconds ago. But because not everyone plays things in episodes. My people have weaponized the Project Aegis formula by creating shells, which, when fired, propel a high-velocity cloud of the material, which should be effective at killing exposed ink tech spirits. There are more effective ways to deliver Aegis, obviously, but time was of the essence, and I needed to improvise. Cool, can you tell me more about Project Aegis? Telestrian Industries Corporation has been working on Project Aegis for two years without fully understanding its use. Okay. Lofweir did not trust me with the information. My engineers finally met the dragon's specifications three months ago, and had just begun production process when my cousin Lin hired Shadowrunners to destroy the lab and the factory. Uh, leaving us only the sample you stole. Why was Marie Louise taken by the Universal Brotherhood? He shakes his head. I'm not sure the host for the Queen is chosen very carefully, as the interactions between the Queen and Lead Shaman are critical. A family connection between the two roles is ideal. Obviously, there is a blood connection between my cousin Lin and my daughter, but I do not believe Lin is the shaman. That would be Jessica Watts. Aha. I should go. Indeed. All right. Let's move on over here and talk with, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Harlequin. How are you doing, Harlequin? How are you doing today? Are you ready to get knee-deep in ectoplasm? Hmm. I have a few questions first. Of course you do. <laughs> uh, so who are you? I don't even know who you are. You're leading the charge here, and I have no clue who you are. I'm he, as you are he, as you are me, and we are all together. Excuse me? <laughs> he seems disappointed that you didn't get his joke. You are excused. He, ba he bows with a flourish. I am Harley Quinn, the light bearer, last knight of the crying spire. He who manipulates Shadowrunners and fights duels with a-holes, and for the next hour or two, I am at your service. All right, well, we already know how to kill the insect spirit. I feel, you know what, just for the sake of completeness, let's go ahead and click on it. Ah, uh, the fun gory stuff. Step one, damage the bug using conventional weapons and magic until the spirit is released from the host body. Step two, shoot the insect spirit using the Project Aegis launcher that Telestrian's people created. Step three, keep shooting until either the spirit is destroyed or you are bug food. Okay. Uh, those are rinse repeat. I like those instructions. They were very clear. What's the connection between the bugs and the Universal Brotherhood? Harlequin's eyes glitter at the question. Oh, this one is genius. Genius. Talk about hiding in plain sight. This cycle. The bugs didn't use some whacked out shaman in a small rural 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 village as their portal. 
They're thinking big. They set up set up shop in the very major city, created a major marketing campaign, and then began aggressively recruiting the dropouts, the disaffected, and the deranged. Just like any good cult. If Aegis fails, if we fail, the world will be absolutely overrun by bugs. It's brilliant. Um, okay. He seems a little bit uh, too enthusiastic about this. Does Hans Brackus really work for a great dragon? He winks. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, I'm ready. Let's go stomp some bugs. His eyes light up. I thought you'd never ask. Please tell me I did not miss a re recruiting guy. You're going to let me recruit troops, right? Filled with magical insecticide. What would you like to do with this item? Oh. Swap with another item. I guess I don't need that rifle. I was wondering about that. All right, we're going to swap it with our rifle. I suppose you should know. Telestrians technicians only had time to create a few few prototype Aegis launchers. I'll be taking one naturally. Another was for you. Treat her well. If you want additional bug splattering firepower, James has agreed to allow one of his personal elite guard to accompany us with the final prototype weapon. And now, let us away. We have a date with Destiny, and she doesn't like to be kept waiting. Let's do this. I didn't get to hire anybody. Oh, yes, there we go. All right. So we've got Harlequin. Um, fixer contacts. Okay, so I could bring Coyote with me again. I'm not sure if I do want to. Um, elite special forces on the black banner from the Elven Nation of Tier Tangier. Tangier. Um, well, I, I, I'm... I really think I'm going to suck with the insecticide stuff, so somebody else who actually has some is probably a good idea. So we're going to grab this guy here, and uh, dang, I've got a lot of money left over. Alright, so let's see, what, what kind of weak spots do we have? This guy is good with close range and long range, evidently. Actually, let's take a look at his skills. It's probably a better idea. He's got good strength, decent quickness, good willpower. So he's a cheese, kind of a... He's a close combat guy. Alright, so Harlequin's a close combat guy. Uh, the, uh, the, the ghost is the special forces guy. He looks to be more of a, um, what is this guy? He's kind of well-rounded-ish. He's b better, a little bit better at long range, though. Shotguns and rifles. So we've got, uh, the caster. We've got the close range. We've got the long range. Uh, I feel like we should have a utility. So either, like, a, a decker or, actually, a decker probably is not a bad idea. Um, we used uh, both Portex and Holly Won't before. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling Portex. I kind of liked working with Portex. Um, what do the really expensive ones cost? Uh, no, the, 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 I was wondering if the price went up as you went uh, further down. Yeah, I, I think we're going to leave uh, Coyote at home this time. And we might go ahead and grab Portex just because I want to have a, uh, a Decker just in case. All right. This should do it. Are you ready? I'm not. Let's do this. Head to the hive beneath the Universal Brotherhood. Confirm. All right. Let's do this. You return to the Universal Brotherhood. Your return to the Universal Brotherhood is anything but subtle. The team hits the same back door Coyote found and you storm through, quickly making your way into the restricted area and the room where you last met Jessica and first encountered the bug. You stand there together, listening to the sounds of chittering coming from somewhere, the somewhere distant. Harlequin stares into the darkness, humming tunelessly while fingering the sword on his hip. Then he turns, lifts his aged launcher to his lips, and gives it a kiss. You give the signal, and the hunt begins. All right. Sounds exciting. Feels like we're at the, the climax. It feels like we're definitely at the end of the game, so let's do this. It's exciting. It's been a long time, uh... Since I started this series, and I feel like, all right, we're finally, we're finally getting to the end here. That side door you found last time you were here was helpful. We avoided all those Universal Brotherhood, spa, cult, yahoos. Telestrian was right. You're a real value add. Why, thank you, Harlequin. Harlequin grins a wide, predatory grin, both sets of his pearly white teeth offset by the livid red lipstick around his mouth. Now, the fun begins. Um, wait, wait, I, I'm a dumb. I have some questions. Of course you do. If you won't tell me who you are, will you at least tell me what you can do? Sure, there we go. See this sword? Yes, or it's hard, kind of hard to miss. Yeah, it looks unusual. Can you tell me more about it? Um, I'll just go with yes. 
I can stick people with it. Pretty good too. I also have one of those uh, telestroph telestrophere magical bug eradicating launchers like the rest of you. Is that it? Is that not enough? Beyond the tattoos that adorn my face, I have another, a recent addition in a place that only those closest to me will ever see. No, that's cool. We're good. We're good. It is a dragon, but don't tell Hans. I like this guy. Oh, and I am a powerful mage as well. I forgot that. Oh, well, thanks. Now, now I know. Um, oh, wait, wait we, we already kind of knew that. By looking at his stats, we knew that he was a, like a cheek, uh, uh, an adept, right? A cheek caster? Ch yeah. Uh, I already know how to kill an Netsex spirit. We're not going to do that again. Or what can we expect to find down here? You know as much as I do on that account. You have actually seen one of the, those anatomical synergetic trans dwellers in darkness. I have not. Okay. However, based on your recent reconnaissance, I would expect to find deranged cultists, deranged priests, a deranged shaman, and a beep ton of giant bugs. All right. I'm ready. Let's do this. New objective. Stop the ceremony. All right. So I've got my launcher. Uh, wait. Dragon sword. Oh, I'm not controlling me. I'm controlling. What's his face? Harlequin. All right. Well, let's control me first. Can I control me first? I can't control me first. Why can't I control me first? I, I want to cast some spells, guy. I, I got to get some armor on you people. You're, you're going to like die if you I don't. Okay, sure. Can you cast spells? Let's see what spells you've got. Uh, so he's got a stride. It's uh, The adept's movement is increased by two. Uh, he's got quick strike. Uh, let's see. Wait. The, the adept gains a zero AP cost attack. That does a six HP damage to the target. Okay, so he gets basically gets a free attack he can use and it doesn't cost anything to Okay, so that's cuts kind of cool. So every uh, every two rounds he can get a free 6 HP to uh, his opponent. That's not too bad. It's pretty good. He's got some mana balls and mana bolts and aim. Okay. Well, since I can't do anything with, with Alex, I guess we're going to go ahead and just um, send him through the door. Sure. Run through the door. I still can't select Alex. Okay. Uh, so we have a Brotherhood Gunner. So what do we want to do with this guy? We probably want to go up and uh, smack him good. But I feel like if I run all the way in where he's going to get blindsided by anything else that might be in the room. So I'm kind of wondering, do, is it better for me to go ahead and uh, take cover behind something? No, let's go ahead. Let's just have him try to attack. Move in. Hiya. And he misses. Great job, guy. Great job. Um, all right. So we're going to send you in. I'm going to get you in uh, behind cover. Dang, it's going to take him two whole actions just to get behind cover. Uh, man, these guys, people, these chances, the chances of hitting are pretty terrible. Aren't you supposed to be like some special operations? These are deranged cultists. You should be able to hit these people a lot easier. All right. Dead eye shot. Single target. One bullet. Increases accuracy by 20%. Uh, is that all it does? I was kind of hoping for some sort of, you know, like critical hit or something. Okay, sure. We'll just try it. Brotherhood Gunner. 15 damage. That was amazing. Wow. All right. Um, Portex. He's going to get tune. Ch ch tune. He's going to get tune uh, to ribbons. What? Why can't I? Why can't I move Alex? What the heck? Come on. Oh, thanks. Now you let me move. Thanks, game. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and heal my wounds now because, you know, I've been hit. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, I can't use Petrify now because now I'm now I'm casting my, my, uh, uh, my utility spells. Freaking, freaking freak freak. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and put some armor on somebody. Portex. So I've got to spend my entire first action sort of putting my, my, we'll say, utility spells on people. That, that's awesome. All right, well, hopefully Buddy here can go ahead and ch chop these guys down with his sword. 16 damage. Uh, 8 damage, and I'm going to go ahead and try this thing here. Um, go ahead and use a quick strike. I got a, a free hit. Oh, nice. Critical, and then try, take him down. Dang, 32 damage. All right, Mr. Special, special Forces guy. Uh, we've got two guys. One guy's here, though, and I think we want to take out the mage. Mages tend to be bad news. 
Uh, can I go ahead? I can do a burst fire, which will do pretty much the same thing. Hmm. So this will increase the chances of critical, but uses more ammo. Okay, let's try it. Hey, not too bad. 23 damage and not enough AP. Uh, to just shoot? I just want to shoot a normal shot. Okay, there we go. You're a terrible shot. Seriously, for someone who's supposed to like some special forces and also so cool guy. You're really not very good with that weapon, are you? Come on, Port Portex, you know what you suck too. Oh no, our guy has been shotted in the back. We need to help him and I can't use heal wound. So if he takes another hit, I won't be able to heal his wounds using magic. Which is something I would like to do. However, can he- does he have a healing spell of his own? He does. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, Harle get Harlequin to go ahead and heal himself. And I just noticed some uh, sort of uh, sort of little green um, healing icons actually go up above Alex, which I found I find kind of particular uh, interesting. I don't know if saying particular makes sense. Anyways, let's see here. Let's go ahead and rush on up with our sword and uh, take this guy out. I I'm still kind of learning the, the the characters and what they're capable of. Oh come on, you come on, guy. You're you're better than this. Aren't you? Okay. He's down. And I don't see anywhere else to go, so we're, we're basically heading over there. So we're gonna start moving up uh, towards this, uh, this area over there and... Yay! I'm sorry, it's like, it's the second we got into combat, I feel like my commentary just sort of fell apart there. I'm just like, alright, stuff, words, let's just start stringing random crap together. Now... The door looked locked, but it looked like I could interact with it when Alex was closer. It looks locked. If I end the turn, and I've, I've got Alex, I can go over here and open the door. I just want to make sure there's nothing in here. There doesn't appear to be anything in there, so let's uh, head on to the next area. Let's go, people! It's bug killing time. Alright, so basically we're gonna go ahead and run uh, people over there and it's gonna be a lot of fun, I guess? I, I find it interesting that they, they started combat off in this room. We basically fought through one room and now we're going through that. I don't know, it just, it seems kind of... What was the point of that? Maybe it was kind of easy win. I don't know. It shouldn't need easing in at this point in the game. We're, we're pretty far along. Alright. Um, I'm looking for cover here. What kind of cover do we have? We've got one thing there and the two spots here. So we've got a total of three spots of cover overlooking that direction, uh, which is where I feel like the most of the combat's going to be. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, use my two remaining actions here to put armor on, uh, let's see, Harlequin and uh, this ghost guy. Slap some armor on them and then we're going to go ahead and end the turn. Uh, so that way, we're, actually no, we're going to sneak up a little bit closer. I don't want to go around the corner just yet because I don't want to alert any uh, any enemies, any guards or anything. Uh, so we're going to stack up and then we'll all sort of just sort of move in afterwards. Alright, end. And I think Alex should be sort of one of the first ones in here. Three actions though, that's... She's not really effective there. Okay. Fall back to the elevated one. Fall back to the elevated one. Okay. Uh, let's, let's take a look at the situation. We know there was at least two other voices over there, so we've got three, uh, cultists, I guess we'll say. So, what can we do? <sighs> Nothing. Because all my, all my good spells take up too many, uh, too much AP. Uh, can I just use flamethrower? 25 damage? Sure, let's try that. Missed. Overwatch? Really? Okay. Well, now that, that, now that we know his Overwatch is done with, we can have uh, Harlequin run in and uh, start hacking him up. So, we'll do one hit, two hit, and then maybe I can take him out with the quick hit. Yeah, there we go. I'll use quick strike and then get uh, Harlequin behind cover. Ah, oh, just, just, just didn't take him out. I'm still going to get him behind cover, though. Uh, because, you know, his buddies are going to start opening up fire. So, if I can get uh, the, the ghost guy here... The special force guy behind this box. He can drop this gunner. There we go. And then continue firing. So, um, what is that? A Brotherhood follower. Uh, I don't think that. It looks like they're carrying a, a melee weapon. 
so 60 I have a 64% chance of hitting them where they're at right now or I can put buddy here into overwatch and what that's going to do is uh, chances are as the brotherhood follower gets closer uh, it's the chance of hitting them is gonna be higher so I'm kind of hoping that uh, then our uh, the ghost is gonna be able to have a better chance of actually hitting him with the one action he had left let's go ahead and uh, stick Portex behind some cover uh, let him take one shot. He's gonna actually you know what no reload your gun and then put you on overwatch as well Oh, okay, I wasn't expecting that guy to move but oh, they're both running away You know it makes sense because you know they said fall back to the elevated one. They they, they kind they, they clearly broadcast their intentions All right, uh, let's go ahead and make sure that uh, our people are armored up and we'll uh, slowly move our way up to the door Because I don't know if anyone's gonna be coming back through the door all right, so, uh, Alex, you uh, go ahead and take a position there. And you know what, guys? I know we just started raiding this, but I'm out of time for today. So, we're going to go ahead and save the game um, as whatever it is, because uh, we can't name or save games in this game. We're going to go ahead and save the game and end things here. So, uh, if you like the video, you like the content, and you would like to see more of it, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, leave it a thumbs down. Either way, let me know what you thought in the comment section. And until next time, I would like to ask you all to game on.